Today I'm going to tell you the story about a man, a boy really, who had very specific plans and ambitions for his boat on the hard stand. In the end, circumstances didn't really line up in a way that his plans could be realized and so he had to make some sacrifices. Alright, now in all seriousness, I think you all know that I am the boy and if you remember from my last video, I told you that I got very ill during the recent holidays which made me lose a lot of time in my projects. And so at this point, I would first like to take a moment to thank all of you who send me kind words and get well wishes and let you know that I not only fully recovered but that I feel stronger than ever before. I will tell you more about some of the other circumstances that I was facing here and that forced me to make sacrifices a little later in this video. And so for now, let's see how the story unfolded. Alright, we got the boat out of the water. So far, everything is going smoothly. But in a few moments, something is gonna go very wrong. The guys from the marina are putting in place various stands and blocks of wood to stabilize the boat on land. When placing the pieces of wood in the forward section of the keel, the worker put too thin of a piece exactly between the ribs and then this happened. Let me show you that one more time. What you just saw is the boat caving in under its own weight and crushing a section of the keel. I remember thinking at the time that it's surely gonna be a lot of fun to fix this, but we're gonna have to leave this for later. For now, let's focus on rigging up the boat without further incidences and then we can start cleaning the underwater ship. Here, a prosperous colony of river mussels has settled in. To remove them, I use this large scraper tool Next I'll do a round with the high pressure cleaner and we also went over it with an angle grinder and a steel brush but we did that off camera. With the underwater ship fully cleaned, the weather playing in our favor and the help of a few good friends we go ahead and apply a new layer of anti-fouling. Alright, now with the anti-fouling done, let's have a look at what were some of the items I planned to do initially, but then couldn't for whatever reason. First and foremost, I wanted to renew the stuffing box on the boat's drive shaft. This one is pretty much at the end of its life and it should be renewed as soon as possible. Another item on the list was to replace the gasket on the toilet's outlet pipe, as this one is leaking, so it should be changed. I also wanted to take the opportunity to upgrade the steering system to a hydraulic one. And of course, now that we have the boat on the hard stand, why not finally take care of those huge holes in the boat's garment? Long story short, I managed to do none of these because I lost a lot of time due to an illness as mentioned before and I couldn't extend the time on the hard stand because my lease here at the marina had come to an end and the owner had other commitments for the spaces that I was occupying. So, let's do the best with what little time we have and try to get this boat at least operational and safe for the 7 to 8 hours trip we have ahead of us in the near future. I will still start working at the steering system, specifically at the rudder, which appears to be completely stuck due to corrosion. You see, this is actually a stuffing box, same kind as we have on the drive shaft, and so when moving the rudder, only this upper part should be moving. These bottom two parts should not be moving at all. You can see in fact that the bolts have broken, probably because this upper tube is stuck. And so when trying to move the rudder with the steering wheel, the forces that were applied have broken those bolts, making the entire stuffing box rotate instead of only this upper tube. I cleaned it all up, applied some rust converter, some WD-40, to loosen up that upper tube and I greased the stuffing box. I replaced the bolts with new ones and so now the whole thing is working normally again. On the upper deck we also had a situation with those steering cables where apparently one of the strands of one of the cables broke and wound itself up in such a way to get the entire steering system stuck. So I replaced the steering cables
And so now this tool is working normally again. Alright, next let's have a look at that little dent that happened while the guys at the marina were jacking up the boat. On the inside you can see how precisely he hit exactly the middle right between the ribs. Had he used a slightly wider piece of wood or placed it 10 centimeters to the left or right, probably nothing would have happened. So I cut two pieces of 5 mm sheet steel. With those I would first draw the outline of the area where to cut. I put some of that hardly flammable cloth on the inside and then I cut out the crushed section of the hull. First I push it out from the inside, then I use chisel and hammer to get it removed from the outside. Looking at the piece like that, it's clearly visible that the steel was thinned out quite a bit in some areas. Something to keep in mind for the next time we put the boat on the hard stand. Now that we got the crushed piece cut out, it's time to prepare the area for welding. I've decided to let the new steel sheets overlap with the steel from the hull, rather than cutting out the exact size and shape of the new steel sheets and trying to get all the steels perfectly aligned. And while we're here, let's replace that sacrificial anode. Next I invited my welder friend, the good one, to weld in place those pieces. Here once again, because it's under the waterline, I don't want to take any chances by trying to weld it on myself. Whenever my welder friend is here, I learn a lot of tricks and some of the techniques he applies. Such as here, where he's using a plastic hammer to beat down the fresh tech welds while they are still hot and malleable. This will not only make the material sit more flush, but also make it easier to weld over the tack welds later on. Once the welder is done tack welding everything together, he will start placing longer welds without welding for too long in the same area to avoid the material from warping. It appears that he places the welds at such a distance that he can fill the gap with a single weld of equal length as the other ones. And so here's the finished result. Right away, you can see that a true professional was at work here. The welds appear very homogeneous. The welds that were placed on top of other ones cover all the gaps and potential openings completely. And the result is even more impressive if we consider the fact that it was all done overhead. So once again, a huge thank you to my welder friend. And with that, let's move on. I clean up the welds just a little bit with the angle grinder and then I paint a few layers of primer and then anti-fouling. On the inside I'm gonna add a few coats of a two component epoxy primer. This should provide sufficient protection while waiting for me to have time to paint it more thoroughly. Next we come to what I consider my biggest defeat in this endeavor, namely that I'm gonna paint the main section of the boat's hull, but because of the time constraints I mentioned before, I won't have time to fill those holes with filler or deal with any other cosmetic treatments other than painting the hull with a couple of coats of the same two component epoxy primer. Now the good news is that this epoxy primer seems to have completely sealed any openings that were present in the layers of filler surrounding the hull. So I hope that until next time we take the boat out of the water and that we can work on those holes properly, the condition of the filler on the hull will not deteriorate further. Now then, it's time to put the boat back into the water. 
And I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but it was very windy on that day. I don't know what went wrong or what changed compared to the time when they first took the boat out of the water, but you can see that the angle of the boat is completely off to a point where it seems that it could almost slip out of the straps at any moment. Add the strong wind gusts into the mix and you can imagine how anxious I was during this process. But luckily everything went well, the boat is back in the water, the hull is watertight and everything is alright again. I still wrestle with the question whether it was worth taking the boat out at all and I console myself by saying that I couldn't predict the troubles we were facing recently and that we did the best out of the situation given the circumstances. And so with that I'm going to leave you for today wishing you that you find the courage and the wisdom to make the right decisions at the right time for your projects.